Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started because I, it may not be exactly nine, but it's, it's it um, close enough. So I am Karen Coker, and I'm the Chief Learning Officer for Cigna Healthcare. And we're here today to tell you a little bit about actually a variety of things that we've been doing at Cigna, uh, some of which were talked about in our award application. Uh, for example, behavior-based leadership is one of the things that um, we're, we're, I think, known for, and we'll talk a little bit about what that is all about. Um, but we're also here today just to tell you about some other things that we are doing that we think are particularly new and different and exciting for learning in general, but then learning specifically aligned with business impact. And so, uh, you know, again, we'll get into a little bit of what we mean by that and some of the initiatives we have underway. So um, I'm here today not only from Cigna, but also Sheila McCormick is here with me. She's to my right. Um, she runs all of our customer-facing learning activities. And so one of the things that I'll tell you about when I tell you about the structure of Cigna University, we have responsibility not only for learning for all strategic priorities for employees, but we also have the responsibility to educate all of our external stakeholders. So doctors, clinicians, hospitals, customers, so the 11 million people that have Cigna healthcare um, and we provide health service to, we are responsible for making sure they have knowledge to do what they need to do, and also people that aren't even yet our customers, people that are just general population. But what is the scope of that then? Because sometimes, you know, in a lot of organizations, that's was traditionally a marketing uh, role. So what is, what is the scope of the, in terms of what you handle in terms of touching the customer versus what they say a marketing role? It's a great question. I think you'll see evidence of that when Sheila gives some, some specifics on the initiative that she just recently rolled out. Uh, we do have a marketing organization, a traditional marketing and communications organization, but we're also now doing this customer-facing learning. And so what we're learning through the experience is that it is a lot about marketing um, and that we have to be prepared in a lot of cases to drive some new and different thinking around how do you market when you're trying to get people to be aware of learning and to take advantage of learning. Um, and you have to be prepared to work with those marketing and communications channels. But Sheila's background is actually marketing and PR, not learning. So we, we have the learning engine behind her on the university side, but she's really phenomenal at marketing and PR. And so you'll see evidence of how the whole campaign comes together to be very effective. Uh, but you do have to be prepared for that. And we also do the traditional external. So being a healthcare company, we have 450,000 physicians that are part of our network. We have our channel partners that so we... Are the medical education? Yep. So we do, we do and that. And and... Um, also our... our uh, channel partners, the brokers and consultants that we sell through. So that's the more traditional external. Right? What Sheila is really reaching out to the world. Um, so it's, 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 consumer, it's, it's what we're starting now with is, is consumer education, and that's what um, we'll be talking about. Yeah, whereas our focus, the other focus is more the traditional learning. So um, clinical education. Do you do that yourselves, or do you do, do you hire medic, medical education agencies? We actually do both. Yeah, and we actually, and you'll, you'll hear, because when Sheila gets into her discussion, you'll hear about some of the partners that we've worked with to do some new and different things on the customer side. We also work with a variety of partners on the clinical side, you know, in terms of subject matter expertise. Um, and then we work with General Physics as our, as our single source outsourcing provider on um, just general learning development. So. So we have this very broad, it's probably in the overall scheme of things, if you even just narrow down the population that we, that we focus on to our existing customers and all, all other stakeholders and our employees, it's probably about 13 or 15 million people that we're trying to serve. And that doesn't mean we're trying to serve them all equally by any stretch, but we are taking into consideration their role in our value proposition and in our strategy, and we try to focus on the audiences and the needs based on where we'll get the, the necessary impact. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So uh, my role today, we have a, an agenda, and we're going to tell you a few things. So first, the organization, right, history, how we got to where we are as a university. I'm going to tell you that very quickly. Uh, I think it it's, feels unique for us, but I don't think it's really all that unique, right? But I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second. Stu's going to tell you a little about Stu Cohen on my left has two responsibilities at Cigna. One is what we call distribution college. So it's the responsibility for any and all stakeholders that have an impact on our sales channel, our distribution channel, um, and all the learning that it takes to keep those people achieving their goals. Um, and then he also has responsibility for what we call a client business management team, which is a team of people that are responsible for making sure learning is aligned with business priorities. And he'll describe in detail 
the, the org model that we use, the role that we use, um, and then exactly the, some of the processes and, and methodologies we use to be successful with that. Um, and so Stu's going to get into some of that secondly. Then we'll get into two case studies. Right, and one we're going to talk about is behavior-based leadership. You have some uh, handouts on that, which I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about those handouts in a minute. And Sheila is then going to also get into the customer-facing learning, so two very different initiatives that we're working on that I think will give you a good understanding of our general approach to how we handle strategic priorities. And then lastly, we're going to tell you a little bit about 09 and beyond. Uh, we've, we've recently presented to the chairman at Cigna and put a pretty big commitment out there about what our role would be in the success of Cigna going forward. Um, and we'll tell you a little bit about what, what that entails uh, because I, I think we've, we've got ourselves in a little bit of hot water here in a good way. Um, we have an opportunity to make a really significant difference, um, but it's not traditional. And so your feedback and your thoughts would be able to help us. And so we'll, we'll, wrap, we'll wrap up with that. And we have to do all this in 50 minutes, so um, you know, buckle in, right? We're getting ready. Um, okay, so here's, here was the situation at Cigna. Um, and again, I don't think it's all that unique, but it, it's important just for some context. About two years ago, and I think it was actually two years ago this coming December, right, so it be two years ago, we were a decentralized learning function at Cigna. We had about 250 people, give or take, throughout the company uh, of an employee base of about 30,000 people. So we had 250 people responsible for training of employees exclusively. And within that, almost 80% of what they focused on, if not more, was technical training. So it's how to be an underwriter, how to be a claim rep, et cetera. So all internal, almost exclusively technical, 250 people decentralized. And we decided that we could not be successful with that model. Couldn't be successful because it was too expensive. Couldn't be successful because it was too um, siloed, too specific. We didn't address some of the key priorities of leadership development. And we said we had, to, we had to change pretty radically. And so we centralized, we outsourced, so we created Sydney University as the centralized model. We put all 250 people in. We decided to outsource, decided to strictly focus on the strategic aspects of learning internally and everything else would go outside. So we went from 250 people down to 45 people. We, of course, restructured. You have a copy of the org structure in the document that, that I provided. Um, and then we also expanded the mission pretty, pretty significantly to be all external stakeholders, all enterprise business priorities. And so right away, almost overnight, the focus went from technical training, which became a necessary evil, you know, for lack of a better way of describing, but we all know that's what it is. So it became the necessary evil, but still on the plate, but it was now on the plate with a lot of very visible, very significant enterprise priorities. So a complete, robust management and leadership development pipelining type of learning process. We added on the plate all the external responsibilities, similar to what you're going to hear from Sheila. A very significant breadth and depth change for what the university would focus on. So we, we put the structure in here because it's important for you to understand that the 45 people focus on strategic activities and issues, meaning Stu's team of client business managers, they have to know what the businesses are doing from a strategic standpoint, they have to know what the talent development needs are for them to be successful proactively. And we need to educate people to be ready to do the job before, in some cases, they even know what the job is. Right? That's our job. And so that's what he is doing day in and day out as part of this strategic focus. The development, the delivery, um, the LMS, all admin and, and just day-to-day -day management of learning infrastructure and learning activities, help desk, are all outsourced. Um, as I mentioned earlier, to general physics, and so we don't we don't do any of that ourselves, which is what lets us get away with having the 45 people. And also enables us to bob and weave pretty easily and effectively. So today it may be e-learning. If tomorrow it's not e-learning, we're not saddled with 20 e-learning developers that now aren't aren't utilized and can't be easily reskilled to something else. Um, that isn't our issue. So it's not it's not that it's not a problem. It just is someone else's problem, which enables us to definitely work more strategically. Yeah. I not to ask too many. No, no, go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> I, you know, been in this space and I've worked similar situations and I've come up with many challenges. So what you're describing to me is 